this is the last video in a long day of making videos. This will be the last video that we have that has anything to do with sling loading and sling loading calculation. And for me, this is the most important of all the videos that we've done on sling loading because this is how riggers actually do it. This is how crane operators and engineers that are doing the lift plans. This is the method they use to calculate sling loading. Uh, the other videos that we spend a lot of time on, those are important also, but just really they're just important for the CSP exam or the ASP exam if you end up taking that. Uh, but this is how it's done uh, in the real world and real world rigging uh, lifting operations. But let's go ahead and take a look at the riggers method. And that's not something I made up. That is uh, what it's called in the construction world and in the heavy lifting world the riggers method and this is it this formula right here is it it's really simple it's really simple it's the load weight divided by the number of sling legs times L divided by H and L is the length of the sling leg and H is the height uh, above the load or more precisely the distance from the pick point level to the hook. That's it. That's it. Um, yeah, L, L divided by H is sometimes referred to as the load multiplier or the load angle factor. You'll run into that terminology. Now I do need to say a little bit more about the pick point level. Again, this height is the distance from the pick point level to the hook. If you end up in a situation like this, you don't go all the way from the hook down here. You just go to pick point level. This is going to be your H if you run into this situation. And there are some odd shaped loads that you may run into occasionally where this is, uh, this is the situation. And another situation you may run into is uh, you're making a pick with rigging that has legs of different lengths. Uh, that's a real world situation you may run into, but I'm gonna save that for a full-blown rigging class. We're just dealing with the basics of the riggers method in this video. Okay, so let's do a problem. What is the sling loading on each leg? This is our rigging diagram. We got a, we've got a twin leg sling. We got a load of 12,000 pounds. Uh, the long leg is 94 inches, or the leg of the sling is 94 inches, and the height above the pick point is 50 inches, 50 inches from pick point level to the hook. And here's our formula. Just plug everything in. We have 12,000 pounds, plug that in for load weight. We've got two legs, plug that in there. We've got 94 inches for the length and we've got 54 inches for the height. Now we just do the math. Let me bring my calculator up here and do this simple math. And another thing about this method, you don't have to have a scientific calculator. Heck, you don't even have to have a calculator. You pencil and papers. Uh, really all most people would need to do these problems. A uh, simple calculator just makes it easier. So we got 12,000 divided by 2. Again, we could have done this in our head. And that gives us our 6,000 here. Then we have 94. divided by 50 and that gives us our load angle factor of 1.88 now all we need to do is multiply 6,000 times 1.88 and I'll do it the long way just so you see what I'm doing I could have taken a little shortcut there but I won't 6,000 times 1.88 11,280 pounds. This is the loading on each leg of this sling in this uh, rigging configuration. And an important point I want to make through each of these, I didn't hit upon this in the other videos where we talked about sine and cosine and the, the trigonometric methods, but once we calculate the loading on each leg of the sling, we need to make sure that all the sling material and all connected hardware has enough capacity 
for this 11,280 pounds of tension. You're likely to have shackles, uh, eye bolts, uh, of course the sling body itself, self, either chain or wire rope, normally it's going to be wire rope. All of that has to have at least 11,280 pounds of capacity because that's our sling loading. Again, a lot of a lot of people that don't know any better, you'll see this with small construction companies, they'll just take this 12,000 pounds, divide it by two, and assume that there's 6,000 pounds on each leg. But because of the angle, because of the distance from the center of gravity, it's not 6,000 pounds of, of force that's involved here on each leg. It's all 11,280 pounds on each leg is almost equal to the to the load weight itself. So. Let's look at another problem, another example. Again, these are simple. We'll do a couple real quick here. Then I'll make some additional points and we'll be done. Okay, what is the sling loading on each leg given this configuration? 70,000 pounds, 160 inches for this leg, 120 inches for the height. Plug everything in. Do our calculations. 70,000. I put in too many zeros. Again, we could do this in our head, but it's a good idea to avoid doing too much in your head. Uh, the calculator, if you have it available, use it. Uh, it helps prevent mistakes. Uh, 35,000 over here. Whoops. Now we need to calculate the load angle factor, the load multiplier. Uh, 160 divided by 120. One point three three. Now thirty-five thousand times one point three three. forty six thousand five hundred and fifty that's how much force is at work within each leg of this sling but again because of the angle because of the distance from the center of gravity and we haven't talked about center of gravity yet in class or we may have by the time you watch this video but your hook should always be centered over your center of gravity and the distance from the pick points to the center of gravity is a big part of why the force on the sling increases the way it does when it's at an angle like this when you have multiple leg slings again that's really a topic you'll get into if you ever take a more advanced rigging class uh, you know top-notch rigging classes are going to be about two days I, I said before 12 to 16 hours is what you're going to have into it and the best rigging classes you're going to put your gloves on and your safety glasses and go out and handle some rigging and hook up some loads uh, just like on the previous problem once we have our sling tension we need to make sure that all of our rigging materials have enough capacity for that level of sling tension one more example and this one's got a little bit of a twist to it notice the the measurements are in whole feet everything else up until now has been in inches if you see a problem like this and everything's in feet that's fine just leave it in feet if measurements are in whole feet you don't have to convert to inches uh, go ahead and run through the math here let me back up Okay, we plug in our 115,000 pound load weight, divide that by two, then we plug in our 40 foot length by our 35 foot height, plug those in. Now let's do the math on those. Uh, 40 divided by 35, that's our load multiplier or load angle factor is 1.14. 115,000 divided by 200, or divided by 2, sorry. It's 57,500. 
So we have 57,500 times 1.14. We do that multiplication or sling loading and each leg is 65,714 pounds. And again, if the measurements are in whole feet, you don't have to convert to inches. But usually what you're going to find in the real world is it's not going to be uh, whole feet or it's not going to be whole inches. Um, or you may have mixed measurement. You may have 40 foot and 18, foot seven, 18 feet 7 inches. If you run into that, like we'll see in the next problem, you need to convert everything to inches. And we have 33 feet. 18 feet 7 inches, load weight 62,350. Go ahead and pop all this up here. Again, if measurements that you have available are in feet and inches, convert everything to inches. If it's in whole inches, fine. If it's in whole feet, fine. But when you have mixed measurements like this, uh, convert everything to inches. And when we do this for this problem, we plug in our 62,350 divided by 2. 33 feet is 396 inches. Let me just double check that to make sure. 33 times uh, 12, 396 inches. Then 18 times 12 plus 7. 223 inches so our numbers are all correct here okay 396 divided by gives us a load angle factor of 17 1.775 round that to 1.78 then 62 350 divided by 2, 31,175, multiply this times 1.78, we already have 31,175 in the calculator, I'm just going to multiply times 1.78, enter, 55,491.5 pounds is our sling loading the tension in each sling. All right. You might run into a problem like this or a situation like this. Again, I'm talking about a real world situation. Uh, you're getting ready to make a pick. The rigging is already attached and all the slack is hoisted out of the rigging. You need to verify the sling loading. But the top of the rigging is over 20 feet up in there. Heck, it could be 30 feet up and you, you don't have the rigging measurements readily available. Again, you should have in your rigging plan, but let's say you don't. You know, it's, they're starting to, to, to make the lift, the slack's all out of the rigging, but you wanna verify it. How do you do that? You can't reach up there with your tape measure if it's 20 feet or more. How can you take the measurements from the ground and use the riggers method to calculate the sling loading? Now, I've kind of given you a hint there with uh, the L and the H. Now here's what I do. Measure up 36 inches on the sling leg. And this is the sling leg. Measure up 36 inches on the sling leg. Make a mark, piece of chalk. You really don't even have to make a mark, but to be precise, I want to make a mark. And then from that mark, I measure the vertical distance to the pick point level. What I'm doing is creating a smaller version of the rigging triangle. And with this smaller version, it is in proportion to the larger rigging triangle. So with the 36 inch leg and whatever this is here, I can calculate the sling angle factor or the load angle factor without having to get a ladder out or get up in a man basket to do that. Uh, and it doesn't have to be 36 inches. It can be 24 inches up the leg and then straight down. To the pick point level but uh, you know whatever you choose is fine but uh, this is how you can do this without you know once it's already up in the air 
one last one last point I want to make and here we're getting into a little more advanced rigging math when we start talking about three legs and four legs and eight legs and you can have you can have bridle slings that have you know in eight twelve legs I mean that's very rare that you're gonna have that many uh, legs in a single sling but it is possible um, but let's say you have sling loading using uh, uh, sling loading for a three leg sling same process in this case we want to convert our five foot six inch and our four foot six inches to inches uh, we have a three thousand pound load we have three legs uh, three thousand divided by three is one thousand sixty six divided by fifty four is one point two two our uh, sling angle factor load angle factor our sling loading and each leg is one thousand two hundred twenty two pounds but once you get more than two legs it gets tricky this assumes what we've done here assumes that all legs are equal length and an equal distance from the load center of gravity which doesn't always work out that way when you have more than two legs it is entirely possible that one or more slings may carry a small amount or even none of the load it is wrong to assume a three or four leg sling will have a capacity three or four times greater than a single leg and if you're absolutely sure that all your measurements are dead on you can use this method but here's the best practice this is what you're going to learn in a Crosby rigging class other rigging classes this is what I, well you may not hear riggers talking about this because some riggers don't know any better but uh, rigging classes more advanced classes the best practice uh, two legs of a multiple sling should have enough capacity to carry the load don't depend on any legs beyond the beyond two because of the way the load can be balanced the way the center of gravity uh, can be configured related to the pick points you could end up with one of these situations where one leg or maybe multiple legs they're they're there more for balancing the load than for their lifting capacity for this example here this is what i would recommend if i was doing a rigging plan uh, calculate the sling loading for two of these legs and make sure that each leg each of the three legs has enough capacity for that calculation if we recalculate this for two legs using these numbers and I'm not going to redo this but you know just trust me on this you could do it yourself if you wanted to um, if we recalculate this for two legs we're going to find the sling loading to be 1830 pounds in each of two legs so make sure you use this as your starting point make sure that each leg all three legs has enough capacity to handle 1830 pounds and that's going to be the best practice that gives you the greatest level of safety in lifting when you have uh, more than three le or more than two legs in your bridle sling um, all right well that's it for the riggers method that's at least all that i'm going to burden you with in this class i do encourage you if you get a chance take a crosby rigging class uh, maybe eventually at NSU we will be able to do something uh, uh, that's the equivalence of a Crosby rigging class. But again, it's 12, 16 hours, which that's almost half a, half of a semester if we're th thinking about a three credit hour class. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you're ever out on a job and you have a rigging question, uh, give me a call. Send me a text. I don't plan on changing my phone number anytime soon.